Good afternoon friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jenny. This is At Home with Jenny and today we are going to make beef stew. We're using the seasoning packet. We are not following the cooking directions. I have my own cooking directions. We do need the beef stew seasoning mix, garlic, salt, and pepper. We do need some oil. Okay, here's the flour for the saute of the meat and thickening of the roux. Uh, we are using baby red potatoes, a yellow onion, some celery, some carrots, and the beef stew meat. So the first thing we need to do is clean the vegetables. We are going to use about five celery stalks. Four carrots. There's three. That one's pretty yucky. I'll just cut the end off there. I mean, it's not yucky. It's just not beautiful. This is my favorite one out of the whole bag. Maybe I'll do one more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're going to scrub these up. And then I'm going to peel the carrots. And then we're going to cut everything up. The water is lukewarm. You don't want it hot because it'll cook your vegetables. And I don't like it cold because, well, I don't like cold. We can peel these right in the sink. I'll grab my peeler in just a minute. So here's the new stock of celery we just got yesterday. We use four stalks from this. We're leaving the peels on the baby ribs. We're just gonna dice them up into it. And right now it is about 3.15 in the afternoon. We do plan on eating between like 5 and 5.30. So you wanna give yourself about two hours from start to finish for prep, including cooking time until everything is done. So you'll want to prep all your vegetables first and then we'll start the meat after everything is diced up. All right, let's take everything over to the cutting board and get everything diced up. Things first, let's peel some carrots. I don't like the peels on the carrots in my beef stew. Interesting because it looks like it grew around another carrot in the garden. Not my garden, I wish, but not this year. Since we just moved into our house this summer, next spring we have big plans for a garden. I already have some garlic planted outside for next summer's harvest. And I just ordered a whole bunch of bulbs um, for the flower garden. All right, we're done with the carrots. Let's move ahead. Let's get these carrots sliced up. 
The best tool you can have in your kitchen is a sharp knife. Okay, this one's going to be interesting. Just cut this twist off. Just cut this carrot into fours because it is so big. You want to try to keep the pieces somewhat uniform. It's hard when your carrots aren't the same size. Like here, this is big. This is small. These carrots are going to cook a lot faster than these ones. So I can cut these smaller, actually. Yeah. All right, the carrots are done being diced up. Let's transfer them over to the sheet pan while I cut up everything else. Celery next. Cut off the top and the white part off the bottom. <laughs> okay, this is pretty funny. Oh, that smells so good. Something about the smell of fresh celery just makes me think of summer, even though it's fall. Celery and cucumbers make me think of summer. There we go. All right, we'll put the celery on the pan next to the carrots. We're making a mirepoix, carrot, celery, and onion. And then potatoes, of course. Uh, let's do the potatoes and then we'll do the onion. And onion. This is just a yellow onion from the grocery store. I think we'll just use half of it. We'll save the other half for later in the week. Cut off the top and the bottom. Peel off the outer layer. This smells so good. I love yellow onions. White onions make me cry. <laughs> Red onions are a little too strong. I just really like yellow onions when I'm cooking a savory dish. Let's see. All right, that was quick. A little bit of peels left in there. Get that out. It's never fun to eat in the middle of your meal. Okay. Beautiful diced up onion, and it'll fall apart a little bit, layer by layer, as it cooks. Get this on the sheet pan. 
So here's what we just did. Carrots, celery, potatoes, and onion. And let's get the stock pot out. All right, here's the beef stew meat we got at the grocery store. Uh, let's go ahead and use this stock pot as the bowl. Here we go. We need to put flour in here, a uh, couple tablespoons. Yeah, we'll do three tablespoons of flour. Let me grab my measuring spoons right behind me here. Oh, I need to open the flour. Okay. One. We'll put the meat in and we'll put the other two tablespoons on top and then we'll stir it around. Two. And three. it up. You want to coat the meat with the flour before we saute it. I do want to add some salt, pepper, and garlic to this. This will help make the sauce thicker as well. Um, so you don't have a watery beef garlic powder. Salt and pepper. All right, start cooking. All right, the burner is on high. You just need it to come up to temp, and we'll add some oil. I think this is going to be pretty delicious. We'll get the olive oil out. It's a brand new bottle, so I do need to open it. A couple tablespoons of oil. All right. Tarragon. get cooking. All right, so what you want to do is saute the beef. So it is about halfway cooked through. Just has like a light crust on the outside um, from sauteing it. And then we will start adding everything else. And I can't stress this enough, you really want to clean as you go. So I just cleaned up. Uh, let's see. A couple more minutes um, on high. And then we can turn it down, add our vegetables, get those sauteed. And then get the water and the seasoning packet in here. And we'll be able to cover it up and let it cook. All right, the beef is just about ready. See, some of these have some nice color on them. Right there. We're gonna need three cups of water. Get my big measuring cup out. Let's get these vegetables in there. Potatoes. Whoops. Onions, celery, and carrots. Okay. 
time to add the extra seasoning packet. We already have tarragon, salt, pepper, garlic in here. This is the beef stew seasoning packet from the grocery store by McCormick. Not sponsored. Three cups of water. It's still on high. We need to bring it to a boil and let it cook. Um, covered, simmering for 45 minutes. It is 3.50 right now. We started at just about 3 o'clock. Started filming at about 3.15. Get this all stirred up. Looks like it's going to be delicious. All right, as soon as that comes to a boil, I'll be right back. All right, it's starting to simmer. Stir it up a little bit. I am actually a little concerned that there's not enough water in here. I don't want it to be too watery. I know we'll get some water from like the celery and the carrots, but I'm really concerned about the potatoes cooking properly. So I'm just gonna add another one cup of water, a cup and a half. Let's see what happens. That's better, one cup. Much better. All right, so we just added a total of four cups of water. Now this can come to a boil. We'll reduce the heat to simmering, cover it, let it cook for a few hours. Actually just about an hour, a few hours, <laughs> listen to me, uh, one hour. It's about four o'clock and we will be eating around five. The rice is cooking. I eat rice with my beef stew. I do need to make the cornbread. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, before we can start the cornbread, the beef stew has come to a boil. So we're gonna go ahead and cover it, turn the heat down to low, and let it cook for the next hour. All right, let's make some cornbread. We need cornmeal. We need flour, which I'm gonna use this kind, self-rising. Uh, baking powder, some salt, some milk, an egg, vegetable oil, honey and sugar. We need one cup of cornmeal. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll make the recipe as is. We're not gonna double. I was just thinking we would double it, but we don't need to. Plus we're only feeding three people. Okay, so. Oh, the oven needs to be at 450 degrees. So let's fix the oven here. 475, convect at 450. Um, do the math, there we go, 450. All right, um, one third cup of flour. I used the wrong flour. Well, I was gonna use self-rising but I pulled this one out and forgot. That's always great. We'll just have regular cornmeal. <laughs> Corn bread. Okay, so let me get this other flour out of here. Uh, two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And I have Clabber Girl baking powder. Not sponsored. One. A half a teaspoon of salt. Two thirds cup of milk.
one egg. No, I cannot crack an egg with one hand. Uh, next is three tablespoons of vegetable oil and one teaspoon of sugar, optional, which we are definitely sweetening this up. So we'll do one, two, and three tablespoons of vegetable oil. And the oven is up to temp, so that's good. One teaspoon of sugar. And I am adding honey to this as well. There's one teaspoon. Come on. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of honey. Cause I love some honey on my cornbread. Let's see. Stir it all up. Mix it well. You'll have a nice little batter. I'm using a Pampered Chef loaf pan, which you can use any loaf pan or like a small baking dish, like an eight by eight would be fine. I don't have one right now. So we're gonna use a loaf pan. I need my cooking spray. Okay. All right, so the oven is ready at 450 degrees. We're gonna pour the batter into the loaf pan and then we're gonna cook it for about 40 minutes. Make sure you remember to stir the beef stew occasionally as it cooks so nothing sticks to the bottom like the potatoes. This looks really delicious. When it's done, I serve mine over rice in a bowl or on a plate and then a side of cornbread and you're all set. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys in the next.